During my over 30 years of researching ufology, I've spoken with many pilots and military officers from around the world who had intriguing UFO stories and sightings to share. Recently, a story from a 35-year CIA veteran by the name of Chase Brandom made national headlines when Lee Spiegel from the Huffington Post posted a story about Brandom's claims that he viewed documents held by the CIA that confirmed the Roswell incident was of extraterrestrial origin. Brandon first told this story on Coast to Coast. Then in an interview with Spiegel, Brandon stated, quote, it was a vaulted area and not everybody could get in. Whether Brandon's story can be confirmed or not, it seems that more and more retired military officials or ex-government workers are coming out and sharing their experiences of what they have witnessed. At the recent International UFO Congress, an ex-fighter pilot approached me and wanted to tell his story. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dick French spent over 25 years in the Air Force and claims to hold the record for the most combat missions. He also had a military intelligence position where it was his job to debunk UFO sightings. Recently, I sat down and spoke with French about his experiences and his thoughts on how our nation deals with the UFO secrets. We were basically told to debunk any, any of them that we could in any way we could. Dick French is a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel with 27 years of service. His military experience has taken him around the globe where he's flown fighter planes over Korea and Vietnam, worked in military intelligence and been exposed to some of our nation's biggest secrets. I rank number one in the entire Air Force in the number of total combat missions I have. I have a little over 600. The man that's number two has a little over 500. I'm the one that set up the air to ground gunnery, night gunnery program for Luke. I wrote all the SOPs, <laughs> designed it, taught people how to do it. I flew 86s in the Korean War, and I also have Korean service, it was ground service. Uh, among the other things I did, I'm a former prisoner of war interrogator. Uh, I was at, uh, actually at uh, Kojido when the riots happened on Kojido. I've been, so I kind of got a checkered career. I've been in a lot of things. French resides just outside of Sedona, Arizona, where he lives with his wife of one year, Dottie. The two were introduced to each other by their grandchildren at a birthday party for Dottie and fell for each other instantly. French began his career in the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, where he would conduct stakeouts to remove personnel who were breaking the military code of conduct. Feeling unfulfilled in this role, French moved on to pilot training school. I was put in the 6,004th AISS, it's Air Intelligence Service Squadron. I had the duty of investigating any reported UFO. Now my job actually was to debunk it, do anything I could to, to you know, say, well, like it was swamp gas or it was this or it was that. You'd go in and collect evidence, uh, any photographic evidence they had and, and interrogate him regarding such things as the type of approach they made, how they happened to see them and this sort of thing what their estimated their capability when they left, if the thing took off, how fast did it climb, you know, how did it turn. In this position, French was able to investigate some very intriguing and mysterious UFO cases. This uh, UFO <laughs> pulled right up on his wing, sat out there for about maybe 10, 15 minutes on, on the left side, which is, is pilot side, and I'm sure the, the UFO pilot knew it. But anyway, that's the pilot side and uh, then he dropped down underneath it, came up on the other side of it, sat there for a, another 20 or 30 minutes, and then he'd fly off a few miles and then come back, and one thing and another. In the meantime, they got to where the, the FIR, it goes right into the control zone, airport control zone for, for uh, landing at Tokyo. And as soon as he called uh, Tokyo Control, you know, for a slot time, you know, to let down and so forth, the thing just turned, very sharp turn up to his left and away it went. They had a UFO report down to the Hanford Atomic Energy Plant. He scrambled on that, he and his wingman, and he, he got up on the, they were flying 86Ds, pulled up alongside him, you know, and then, you know, the way you force somebody to turn, they wanted to, to turn him in and make him land. 
What happened is when it, it didn't do it, so he dropped the pod and gave him clearance to fire. But before he could pull the damn trigger, blew it, he blew up. They explained that. They said what happened, they had a problem, a malfunction with the fuel control. And the airplane just blew up. They used some kind of electrical uh, weapon of some kind because the second the pod came down, boom, instead of the, the rockets going out and, and knocking down the UFO, the airplane blew up. His position in the military exposed French to many high-profile people, and he even claims to have met Colonel Corso. Yeah, I know. I met Corso after that incident happened, you know, down in New Mexico. When he, when he called in, you know, that he had pieces of it, mm -hmm. and uh, they came out, and th what they actually did, they, uh, they took all of the pieces away from him. They also took the, uh, the uh, bodies, the, both alive and dead, they took all of those to Wright Patterson to the Foreign Technology Division under, uh, under Paul Sleeper. From there, uh, when they finished, they, a lot of that stuff they took to uh, Area 51. French has taken his military experiences and written a novel about them. His book, Macedonian Grey, is the story of a jet fighter pilot's life, both on and off the battlefield. I wrote that as a, as a novel for the simple reason that I'm concerned about uh, getting sued. <laughs> so I wrote it as fiction, however, a great deal of it is based on fact. And had I tried to write about this, uh, say, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have gotten away with it. I mean, it, whether they'd have killed me or what they'd have done with me, but I, I'm sure I wouldn't have gotten away with it. But now, at my current age, and, the, and also there's a, a general loosening up of the all of the UFO information that's a lot uh, it's a lot more open than it used to be I think for those two reasons that I can go ahead and write about this without putting myself in personal danger I'm still currently researching Lieutenant Colonel French's background having interviewed him at length twice I do have reservations about some of his disclosures However, it is obvious to me that French was with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations and that part of his duties were to debunk certain UFO incidents for the Air Force. I think without a doubt that it's, it's got a break. The reason being that statistically, if you if ask people whether they believe that UFOs are real or not, and uh, the vast majority of people say, oh yeah, there, there's got to be something, there's too much evidence. I'd be very surprised if it remains in the, well, like it is for another 20 years. I expect it to be. I mean, it's too much evidence, too many people that are, that know better. Well, they absolutely know better.